Let us all stand. Father God, we come. Lord God, we are thanking you for this day. We are thanking you for your darling son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this opportunity and privilege that we have to stand here and preach your word. Now, Lord, gather the scattered fragments of mind, body, soul, and spirit and pull them together for the purpose of preaching your holy word. Father God, bless these clay lips of mine that thee, your people, would be better benefited and also blessed. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me right now in Jesus Christ's name. And the saints of God said, amen. amen. Jesus me Come on, church, help me. chapter 12, there is a very powerful scripture that I want to uh, deal with on today. Amen. It has blessed the St. Stephen's Missionary Baptist Church, and I want to come today and uh, through the preaching of God's word, amen, share this pericope of scripture with you. Acts chapter 12, 
Amen. We'll just read one verse. Amen. Which is chapter, which is verse 5. Amen. But we will be dealing with verses 1 through 17. Amen. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. If you found it, if you would just respond by simply saying, Amen. 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 Acts chapter 12, verse 5 reads, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Amen. Can I read that one more time? Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer, somebody say, but prayer, was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer. In case you don't know by now, the but changes everything. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. For a few brief moments, I want to talk from the subject, when the church prayed. When the church prayed. Amen. Amen. Ushers, you may be seated. Amen. When the church prayed. If you would just real briefly look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you praying? Are you praying? Charles Haddon Spurgeon said in his quotes on the gems of prayer, he utters these words. There are heights in experiential knowledge of the things of God, which the eagle's eye of acumen and philosophic thought hath never seen. God alone can bear us there. But the chariot in which he takes us up and the fiery steeds with which the chariot is dragged are what we call prevailing prayers. Prevailing prayers is victory when the God of mercy and the God of grace steps in to your situation. The prevailing prayers can take you to Bethel. It can take the Christian or the man of God to Carmel and enables him to cover heavens with clouds of blessing and earth with floods of mercy. Prevailing prayers bears the Christian aloft to Pisgah and shows him the inheritance reserved. It elevates us to Tabor and transfigures us till in the likeness of his Lord. As he is, so are we also in the world when we pray. If you would reach to something more than groveling, motivating experience, if you would look to the rock, the author and the finisher of our faith, the one, as our grandmother Nim used to say, the one who sits up high and the one who looks down low. Then you would open up your window and it might be closed on one side, but when you pray, it will not be bolted on the other. Praying men pray better as they proceed in their prayers. When they go to a point of prevailing, prayer changes people. It is this type of prayer that can get over that which seems too high. This type of prayer can get under that which seems too low. This type of prayer can go around that which seems too wide. And it can penetrate that which seems impenetrable. I'm talking about, brothers and sisters, prevailing prayer. And when the church prays, my brothers and sisters, you can count on things happening on your behalf. Is the church praying today? And I need to ask that question because we do a lot of singing, but we don't do a lot of praying. We do a lot of one-act play, but we don't fall down on our knees. Don't we understand that it is when we fall down on our knees 
That's when we stand tall. It's when we come to God, that's when God is able to bless us. When do we pray? When do we pour out our thoughts and not give unto God a laundry list? A to-do list. When do we call on God and not ask God to change our situation, but ask God that in the midst of our situation to change me. When we pray, are we trusting God? Do we have enough faith in God that when we're in the midst of the fire, we understand that God is right there with us in the midst of when we pray. Don't you understand, my brothers and sisters, that when we pray, God can do that which seems impossible because he does specialize. And don't you ever get to the point of thinking that God doesn't know. God knows everything. He is omniscient. Tell your neighbor, he knows. Even before we utter the words off the cup of our lips, God already knew it. Even before we conjured it up in our heart, trust me, God already knows. Even before we engage ourselves in the proper processes of prayer, trust me, my brothers and sisters, he already knows. And it is this type of prayer that carries the church to higher heights. It's when the church goes down in prayer that the people of the church begin to move and God begins to rain down his blessings. Are y'all walking with me here? I want to point out one main thing and that is that in this particular passage of scripture we have to understand that it is, it is, it is the church under persecution. In verse 1 of chapter 12 it informs us that Herod was vexing certain of the church. Are oh, y'all with me here? In other words, it is informing us that the church was under intense persecution. And my brothers and sisters, even the church on today is under intense persecution. Are oh, y'all walking with me here? We're under intense persecution because now you have churches that are gathered and they're telling our preachers to marry homos and lesbians. The church is under persecution. I've never seen it where you have two men sitting under each other in the worship experience. We used to have at least a little type of respect about ourselves that we couldn't walk to the church like that. But nowadays, the pastor and the first gentleman are conducting worship service. I'm trying to tell you, my brothers and sisters, the church is under persecution. When we don't pray, just because they took prayer out of schools don't mean they took prayer out your heart. Are y'all walking with me here? Is the church really praying? Is the church really engaging itself in the proper processes of prayer? Just because you uttered words don't mean you're praying. Are y'all with me here? You see, prayer ought to get on the inside of us and it causes us to change the way we act. When I came to the Lord, I had to have the testimony that I just don't say what I used to say. I don't do what I used to do. I don't even go where I used to go because when I prayed unto God, God has made a change in me. Is there anybody in here that can raise your sanctified hand and say the Lord has made a change? Point to yourself in me he's done a great work and I believe my brothers and sisters we need to learn how to pray are y'all with me here you, you, you see I, I, I'm convinced that the problem of the church is the problem that we have in our prayer life 